For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. From the Great Lakes Naval Training Station at Great Lakes, Illinois, the Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope. much. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob Priorities Hope, telling you sailors to buy Pepsi and toothpaste and turn in your old tube, and your teeth will be so bright you can get a better-looking girlfriend and turn in your old tub. <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, here I am at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station. What a reception I got here. There were flowers spread all over the ground, and as I stepped out of the car, all the sailors applauded four times while I fell deep in the heart of an open manhole. <laughs> You know, you know, when a visiting celebrity arrives here, they always have a big brass band at the station to greet him. Well, for me, they had a campfire girl playing a harmonica. <laughs> Bob Hope, he said, well, we decided to skip it. This is, the great, this is the Great Lakes country. One more drip won't make any difference. <laughs> I don't see why all the Midwestern people rave about the Great Lakes so much. We have the same thing in California and in, and in midair, too. <laughs> there were two old ladies down here this afternoon. They just saw a sailor for the first time. One of them pointed at the back of his pants and said, Good gracious, Martha, a girdle on the outside. <laughs> And these sailors here, I want to tell you, they're real he-men. I saw one sailor, he had so much hair in his chest, every time he swallowed his Adam's apple took a trip through the jungle. <laughs> I didn't want him to think I was a sissy, so I walked up to one big sailor and I said, listen here, I'm tough. You know what I did to him? I made him carry me to the hospital. <laughs> of course, I got a pretty good physique myself. You know, when MGM saw Johnny Wisemore in a bathing suit, they got the idea for a Tarzan the Apes. When they saw me, they got the idea for a woman of the year. <laughs> but a lot, of these, a lot of these sailors sleep in hammocks. You know what a hammock is. That's government issue curvature of the spine. is a great sailor. He still keeps up the old traditions. The other night he went down with his schooner right on the floor of the Clayton Bar. <laughs> but I like Chicago, though, because they're really baseball mad here. And believe me, they got something to be mad about. <laughs> and it's really windy here on the shore of Lake Michigan. Skinny Ennis walked out on the beach today and stretched his arms. And ten minutes later, they shot him down over Gary, Indiana. <laughs> But I'm sure enjoying this trip in the Hollywood Victory Caravan because of the emergency, people are asked to only carry the most valuable baggage on trains with them. And all I'm taking is my pajamas, my wallet, my toothbrush, and spare tire. <clears throat> <laughs> this, uh, this rubber shortage is really terrific. I stayed at the Ambassador Hotel last night, and during the night, a guy broke into my room, jacked me up, and stole my hot water bottle. Now, Larry Keating. All right, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, all you regular listeners to the Double or Nothing program know... Now, wait a minute, Larry. This is not the Double or Nothing program. Oh, it is this week, Bob. Because if you want to get double value for your money without gambling, here's a sure thing. Pepsodent's new 50 Tough Toothbrush has double the number of tufts, twice as many as any other brush in a small, compact head. Tufts now improve with sturdier, more durable nylon bristles. Double the number of tufts in brushing contact with your teeth. Double the cleansing power and double the pleasure. You not only get a brush that's a pleasure to use and doubly effective as an aid to healthy, sparkling teeth, you get a cash certificate besides. You can use this cash certificate in place of a dime for any item in the store costing 10 cents or more. Drugs, cosmetics, anything you want. Get a 50 tough toothbrush for every member of the family. With each brush packed right in the sealed glass container is the cash certificate worth 10 cents in extra spending money. So outfit each member of your family with the Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush. 
You give them doubly efficient aid to healthy, sparkling teeth, and you help to protect their smiles. Here's Francis Langford singing, Somebody Else Has Taken My Place. Somebody else is taking my place. Somebody else now shares your embrace. While I am trying to keep from Go around with a smile on your face. Little you care for vows that you made. Little you care how much I. Francis Langford singing, Somebody Else Has Taken My Place. Wait till I hear you at the Chicago Stadium tomorrow night with the Hollywood Victory Caravan. They'll love you there, too, Francis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you one of Hollywood's most vivacious and glamorous screen stars and one of our fellow travelers on the Victory Train, Miss Claudette Colbert. Well, Claudette, how do you like it here at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station with all these handsome sailors? Oh, it's wonderful, Bob. By the way, how do you get acquainted with a sailor? Well, in your case, just... (laughs) In your case, just walk by the barracks without a bodyguard, that's all. (laughs) I knew I'd never get to that line. (laughs) What do you mean, Bob? Don't they even wait for an introduction? What? Don't they even wait for an introduction? Listen, Claudette, once the sailor was cast away in a desert island in the middle of the ocean with a beautiful blonde... He was just about to say, pardon me, if we've been introduced, and before he could say pardon, the Marines had landed. <laughs> you... Thank you, fellas. I'll do the same for you sometime. Thank you. <laughs> but you know, Claudette... <laughs> throw... I hope my agent has 10% of this throat. But you know, Claudette, this is one of the best places in the world to train to be sailors. These boys have got a wonderful lake, haven't they? Well, don't be jealous, Bob. You've got quite a bay there yourself. <laughs> Just compare your physique with those fellows out there, hmm? Just look how hardy they are. So what? Look at me. I'm hardy. Bob, there's quite a difference between hardy and lardy. (laughs) Ah, but then perhaps you're not as young as you used to be. Well, I don't know why you say I'm not young. I bet I'm as young as any of these sailors. You are not. I've seen these sailors, and they have American flags tattooed on their arms. Well, I've got an American flag tattooed on my arm. I know, but theirs have more than 13 stars. <laughs> so have I, if you want to count the dimples. You know, Claudette... <laughs> you know... Claudette, I'm glad to be here, and I'm, I'm really thrilled about it. I understand, but that's no reason to make a show of yourself dancing the sailor's hornpipe on Michigan Boulevard. Oh, that wasn't the sailor's hornpipe. I was running after a bus when my suspenders broke. 
Say, just look at all those fellas out there training to be sailors. Gee, how often they must hear those words, those wonderful, impressive words. You mean all hands on deck? No, I mean those words so dear to the heart of any naval man. Roll them, brother, you're fated. <laughs> That reminds me, I heard a peculiar rumor. Of course, I, I don't believe it, but I heard that soldiers and sailors like to shoot crabs. No. What a vicious rumor. Of course, it isn't true. Of course, I have heard of one regiment that shot crabs so often they had the only sailors in the Navy who'd stand at attention in a kneeling position. <laughs> Accord, Ed. I want to welcome you to the Peps on the Show, and I think you really deserve a lot of thanks for taking time out from your work on the Hollywood Victory Tour for Army and Navy Relief to come over here. You know, I wanted to meet you the minute I saw you on the train. Uh, I thought you did, Bob. Really? How could you tell? Oh, I don't know. It was just something about the way you kept walking by and dropping your handkerchief. <laughs> I'm positive you were flirting with me, Bob. Well, maybe I did have a slight gleam in my eye. Slight gleam? That's the first time the super chief ever came into Chicago with two headlights. Uh, Bob, you actually embarrassed me. Uh, I don't mind having an admirer, but, you know, you followed me all over the train wherever I went. Was I that bad? You certainly were. The only way I could get rid of you was to go in the dining car. <laughs> And when we finally did go in the dining car, you were so noisy. I was noisy in the dining car? <laughs> well, perhaps you didn't mean to be, but, gosh, the way you crinkled that wax paper on wrapping your sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, those waiters were so snooty, they wouldn't unwrap them for me. <laughs> oh, but you know it was picturesque. The way dinner was served as the train was going along the edge of Lake Michigan... And you know, Bob, I thought a dollar for a fish dinner was very reasonable. Well, I didn't say it wasn't. No, but you were the only one that put a fishing line out the window and tried to catch your own. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm enjoying the victory train very much. Well, it must be fun for you, Bob, making the trip with all those beautiful girls. Joan Bennett, Merle Oberon, Olivia de Havilland, Joan Blondell. Oh, were they on the train? I hardly noticed. You hardly noticed. For 3,000 miles, you fizzed like a bottle of 7-Up. <laughs> yes. Yes, I percolated all the way from Pomona to Cicero. You know, the whole trip, the whole trip, I sat between Merle O'Brien and Olivia de Havilland. Uh-huh, I saw you, but I noticed you didn't do any talking. I couldn't. Why not? Every time I opened my mouth, smoke would come out. <laughs> They're hep, those guys there. They're very hep. And when we went through that tunnel, I saw you lean over to kiss Joan Bennett. Yeah, but there was a sharp curve in the tunnel, and the train gave a sudden lurch. But what happened? I don't see why all the girls rave about Charles Boyer. Oh. <laughs> yes, the train did lurch and rock quite a bit, didn't it? Boy, I'll say that train rocked. In the morning, I went in to get washed and dressed, and I splashed cold water in James Cagney's face ride off Charles Boyer and walk back to my berth in Cary Grant's pants. Well, that's as close as you'll ever get to any of those three. Well, why, I think I stack up pretty well with them as far as looks go. Well, I, I think you have ears just like Cary Grant, and your eyes are like Boyer's, and you have a chin like Cagney's. Do you really think my features are the same as those fellas? Yeah, but brother, what mistakes were made on the assembly line. <laughs> Well, one thing you've got to admit, Claudette, I was really a big shot on that train when we got to Washington. My brother's a big politician. He gave me a letter of introduction to the president. Boy, I certainly made an impressive sight as I walked in the front door of the White House and handed the letter to the doorman. Well, yeah, you made an even more impressive sight when you came flying out on your ear. Well, how did my brother know Wilkie didn't get in? <clears throat> oh, Bob, isn't Charles Boyer wonderful on that trip? And Cary Grant. I can't figure you out, Claudette. Cary Grant, Charles Boyer, just a couple of ham actors. What's hammy about them? Well, did you see him taking bows in front of the crowd at the railroad station this morning? Yes, you almost fell off their shoulders. <laughs> well, the cups of the sun got a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use, Bob. <laughs> Somehow you just don't appeal to me like Charles Boyer does. Oh, you just like him because of his accent. Well, I guess you're right. I, I do like his accent. Well, I can have an accent like that. Listen. Ah, oh, Claudette, ma chérie, you are très charmant. Come, 
Kiss me. Kiss me. Must be something more than his accent. It's Mary. I'm crazy about. Mary, for Mary is plainly lovely. When she's with me, I'm a happy guy. Gee, Mary, without her, I'm lonely. And if she will say I do, then I will too, and may Mary my. It's Mary. I'm crazy about Mary. For oh, Mary is plainly and lovely. When she's with me, I'm a happy guy. Gee, Mary, without her, I'm lonely. And if she will say I do, then I will too and make Mary. Me. Check and double check. That's what Pepsodent did. They checked and double checked the fact that Pepsodent tooth powder makes teeth twice as bright. Independent laboratory tests had proved that Pepsodent tooth powder can produce a luster on teeth twice as bright as the average of all other leading brands. Say, that's mighty important evidence. It sure is. And then Pepsodent double checked this discovery in practical tests. Yeah, you know, I've seen pictures in the current magazines of the many sets of identical twins who joined in the tests to prove that... Pepsodent tooth powder actually gets teeth brighter. Yes, and here's how the test was made. One twin used Pepsodent tooth powder. The other chose another leading brand. They brushed their teeth the same number of times in the same way. Everything was just alike, except the kind of tooth powder they used. And in the case of each set of twins, after just a few weeks, anyone, and I mean anyone, could pick the twin who used Pepsodent. Just by her smile, the Pepsodent twin had teeth twice as bright. Man, you mean you could tell the twins apart just by their teeth? Well, that's real proof. You bet it is. Pepsodent gives a twice as bright smile. And what Pepsodent can do for the twins, let it do for you. Just go down to the corner drugstore tonight and say, Pepsodent tooth powder, please. Remember, you don't need an empty tube or can when you buy Pepsodent tooth powder. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... As you have heard, Bob Hope leaves tonight with the victory train of Hollywood stars to play benefits in such cities as Kansas City, Minneapolis, Houston, Dallas, and many others. On hearing the glorious news that his city is among those to be honored by the great Bob Hope's presence, says the mayor of Houston proudly, You can fool some of the people all of the time, and you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool all of the people part of the time, and you can fool part of the people some of the time. You can fool part of all of the people almost all of the time, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> And now we find Bob and Skinny Ennis packing for the big trip on the victory train. Gee, Skin, just think, tonight we're taking the train and joining the Hollywood Victory Caravan for Houston. Yeah, say, Bob, I ain't traveling much, you know, and tell me, how much do you give a porter at the end of the trip? Well, it depends. Depends on what? On whether or not he sees you getting off the train. <laughs> Come on. We've got to finish packing. Skin, go in the closet and get the rest of our suits. Oh, Bob, I'm afraid to go in that closet. There's a big moth in there and it keeps beating me up. Skinny, you don't have to be afraid of a moth. Here, take my revolver and show them who's boss. Okay. Give me the gun. Here I go. (laughs) 
Bob, don't stand that. Take it away from him. Not me. He looks tougher than the second lieutenant's heart. <clears throat> hey, Bob. Are we all ready to go down to the train now? Almost. Say, you know, Skin, so many beautiful stars are going on that train. I'm going to call one up and take it to the station. Say, Skin, who do you think is more my type, Olivia de Havilland or Claudette Colbert? Why, Bob, I think Claudette is your type. Olivia is more my type. Well, then I'll neck with Claudette and you neck with Olivia. Okay, and when we get tired of them, we'll just change off. <laughs> Gee, that was fun. What do we play now? <laughs> well... Never mind, we gotta finish packing our trunks. The man from the express company should be here any minute to take our luggage down to the station. Hello? Well, so you're an express man now, Connor. How's business? Fine. I work all day. I got the only trunk of the city with four rubber tires. Well, where'd you, where'd you get the tires? I work all night, too. <laughs> Listen, how soon can you get over here and pick up my luggage? Oh, it'll take quite a while, Hope. I'm doing a big moving job down here. We're moving a ten-ton safe from the tenth story. I'm down here on the ground, and my assistant is going to throw it down to me, and I'll catch it. Colonna, you idiot. You can't catch a ten-ton safe thrown from a tenth-story window. Oh, no? Watch. Hey, Joe, let it go. <laughs> that Joe, he put a curve on it. Colonna, have you got a screw loose in your head? Why, the very idea insinuating that I have a screw loose in my head. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to take, uh, shake my head right now. <laughs> Big son of a gun, isn't it? <laughs> Stop fooling, Professor. You've got to get over here and pick up my trunk so I can make the victory train. Don't worry, Hope. I'll be down to pick up the trunk soon. I just hired a new man, and right now he's helping me move a big trunk out of a window on the 20th floor of this building. Easy, Sam. Remember, you're a new man. <laughs> Let me show you how. Put your foot out of the window. That's it. Now. Didn't last very long, did he? Hello, fellas. Hello, Francis. Well, I'm all packed and ready to go. Gee, I can hardly wait till we get on that victory train again. Just think, Cary Grant will be on the train. He's divine. Wait a minute. Why do you think fellas like Cary Grant are better than me? After all, what's Cary Grant got that I haven't got? Well, Cary is filled with charm. Well, I'm filled with charm. Cary is dripping with personality. Well, I'm dripping with personality. Cary spends his money like water. I'm still dripping. <laughs> hey, Bob. Someone's coming down the hall. Everyone. Bob, it's Vera Vague. Vera Vague, well. Well, well, Vera Vague, pull up your sag and sit down. Tell me, what are you, uh, what are you doing here? Well, Francis invited me to go on the train with you. I'm going to be with you on your whole trip as a chaperone. A chaperone? Yes. You mean one of those people who stand around and keep an eye on everybody and spoil the fun? Yes, yes, I'm going to be a sort of an F.P. in skirts. <laughs> You know, Bob, we young girls can't be too careful. <laughs> Why, only recently a sailor tried to flirt with me, but I reported him to the head of the Navy. Oh, see what the What did you say? Oh, I said the head of the Navy was such a gentleman. Yes, everyone liked Admiral Dewey. Yes, I know. <laughs> now, just a minute, Mr. Holt. I'm just as young as you are, which makes me pretty much of an old brat. <laughs> Miss Vague, uh, what are your duties as chaperone? Well, you see, if anyone tries to kiss Francis, I step between them, just as he's about to kiss her. Well, why do you wait until he's already starting to kiss her before you step between them? Well, if I time it just right, Francis is saved, he's satisfied, and I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, suppose some of them try to kiss her again, what do you do? Well, Bob, have you heard the dainty way a woman can reason with a man? Appeal to his sense of honor and to his sense of decency and to his sense of fair play? Yes. Well, I just bash in his head with a club and save a lot of time. <laughs> hey, what are we going to get going anyway? Uh, say, we'll leave pretty soon, Skin. Clona should be here with his truck any minute. Hey, here he comes now. Why carry things down a whole flight of stairs? Hello, Professor. So you're from the Express Company? Yes. Well, how much are they charging for trunks these days? Oh, I don't know. I never wear any. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello, Professor. 
Professor, do you remember me, Vera Vague? Oh, Colonna, I bet you're surprised to see her here at the Naval Station. Oh, not at all, Hope. Every old tug needs an overhauling once in a while. You know, Professor, I can't be angry with you. You're the type of man I've really been looking for. Why don't we get married, and in a year or so, maybe we'll have a little girl who looks just like me. <laughs> what would you say to that? Drown it. Oh, come on, Professor. Hurry up and take our luggage or we'll miss the train. Yeah, we'll put the bags on your truck, Colonna. Now, come on. Drive us down to the railroad station and step on it. Okay, here we go. Well, here we are at the railroad station. Quite a shortcut, wasn't it? Now I'll drive across the tracks. Now, be careful, Colonna. There's a train coming. Oh, don't worry, Hope. I've been all over these railroad two yards before. Of course, it's not spread out quite so thin. <laughs> oh, thanks for the memory of you, the Navy's pride. We're more than gratified to see your shining faces out there smiling side by side. And thank you so much. And thanks for the memory, you Great Lakes boys who train to free the bounding main. You'll rid the seas of Japanese and make their loss our gain. And thank you so much. So folks, join the trend now prevailing. Buy bonds and help keep these boys sailing. This is no time for shirking or failing. Our force that frees the seven seas. Say, it's been a real pleasure and privilege to broadcast here from the Great Lakes Naval Training Station tonight. And I'd like to thank Admiral Downs and his entire personnel for making it so enjoyable for us all. Also, thank you, Miss Claudette Colbert, for adding so much to our program. Say, I think I should mention that Miss Colbert's salary tonight is going to pay for tickets for the boys to see the show tomorrow. How about that, fellas? You know, I almost forgot about that. That's a real sweet gesture. I mean that. We'll be at the uh, Chicago Stadium here tomorrow night with a whole Hollywood victory caravan, ladies and gentlemen, of 22 stars. Just to name a few offhand, there's Merle Oberon, Claudette Colbert, Pat O'Brien, James Cagney, Joan Blondell, Joan Bennett, Jerry Colonna. Help me out, Jerry. There's 22 of them. A tremendous list of stars. I wish I had time to name them all. I hope I haven't forgotten. I, I know I've forgotten many of them, but I'm sorry, but you'll see them all. They're, they're a grand gang and a grand show. And next week, we'll be broadcasting from Ellington Field, Houston, Texas. The second stop in our seven-week tour throughout the Midwest, South, and East to entertain the personnel of Army, Navy, and Marines. And folks, let me again remind you to buy war bonds and stamps. Help our boys fight the battle in their own way. They're not only fighting for a better world, but they stand ready to give it the utmost to ensure victory. The War Department has put into effect a plan whereby all Army personnel and civilian employees can purchase war bonds. This plan is similar to the payroll savings plan now used in commercial organizations throughout the United States. Yes, our fighting men are doing more than their duty. Let us do ours now. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Our broadcasting tonight was for the entertainment of the Navy personnel and does not necessarily constitute an endorsement of our products by the Navy. This broadcast came to you from Great Lakes, Illinois. This is the National Broadcasting Company.